Hello and welcome to the Tuesday Tell All. This is the Driver Interviews with Bobby Fazio channel at Driver Interviews is the handle. And it's Tuesday already, Tuesday, April 9th. Hopefully everybody can hear me. I'm back in my my uh, my own office. I was in Pennsylvania the last couple weeks, so I'm back in my own little studio, we'll say. And um, I got my background uh, a little touched up here. I was finally able to get my uh, my my rug hung that bunny horn made me thank you so much bunny i'm happy to have it in the background it's really cool i don't even know where you would start on something like this i am not an artistic uh person i don't really have artistic abilities this is amazing <laughs> a rug of my image and likeness name image and likeness right and then we still have bob bender's airborne helmet 101st airborne right here and uh, for anybody that's wondering, this is a Rocky Balboa uh, calendar my wife got me at Christmas time for 2024. So basically, every month has a uh, a, a photo from one of the movies. This one is uh, it's Rocky too. I can tell because his hair is slightly longer. He's got the red headband. He's still got that stinking uh, gray sweat outfit on. So that's Rocky too. If his hair is a little shorter and he's still got that old gray outfit, it's Rocky one. I'm pretty good with all the Rockies. Like I can I can. I can just hear one line or see like one little scene for two seconds, and I'll tell you which Rocky it is. So I'm I'm pretty good like that. I'm just gonna just gonna throw it out there. Good to see everybody though. Walt Walker was first in line today. Let's go. Happy Tuesday. How you doing, Walt? Thanks for tuning in as always. Same to you, Tom Gent. Uh, raced in the CCRA race going on this weekend. Brian Zenzen. All right, everybody. I want special prayers for Brian. Well wishes. He's deployed right now, so we want him safe. We want him getting back as soon as possible. Fast Eddie, we think, we hope, uh, shouldn't be that much longer. He should be coming back soon. But Brian, Brian's just Brian, kind of just left, and uh, that's got to be so hard when you got a family, when you have a wife, uh, kids, and you have to leave for for so many months. Man, I don't know how people do it. So Brian, hang in there, buddy. And thanks for your service. And thank you, Fast Eddie, for your service, too. Can't wait to see you. Tom Baker, let's go, Tom. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for supporting the show. As always, Russ Abrams, good evening. Great weather out here in Michigan. Top 70 degrees today. It was really nice here in Jersey today for once. 70 degrees. I finally put some shorts on. It's the first time since I was in Gainesville that I had shorts on. Scott Cott from Michigan. What's going on, buddy? George Wright from the Motor City. Michigan's in the house tonight, three in a row. Steve Delucia, what's going on, Steve? How you doing, buddy? The rug is way cool, right? Bunny Horn. That's Venice Perno's sister did that. Uh, so you can look her up on Facebook, and uh, she'll be happy to help you out. Justin Graham, how you doing, buddy? Need an earthquake kit. I'm the only person that didn't feel that earthquake. I don't. I was sitting at this desk and uh, working, and then all of a sudden, everybody started messaging me. Did you feel that earthquake? Did you feel that earthquake? 4.7? I'm like, no. I don't think so. So I don't know. It's just the way it is with me. That's the second time that's happened in my life where somebody asked me if I felt an earthquake and I didn't. Bruce Fulper, all in Ford now in the rear. <laughs> Everybody loves the Ford nine inch rear, right? I mean, who wouldn't? Dennis Chapman, what's going on? Dennis, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. Nick Ryder's in the house. Doug Dex, finally warming up in Illinois. Thanks, Doug. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you. And everyone should boycott American Airlines for opening his bag and taking his stuff. Now, I never heard of such a thing. When you travel as a as a uh, active military, you get free bag check. First of all, you can carry on whatever you want, but I have never known them to tear it apart and search it because I've traveled with Fast Eddie before, and uh, he was allowed to bring his big big uh, bag on the plane. But I never heard of this, so I'm a little ticked off at American Airlines. And some other people were chiming in with nightmarish stories of American Airlines. I have nightmarish stories from Spirit and Frontier. And Spirit's even cutting back right here in Atlantic City. So airlines, I don't know, man. And what's up with the emergency landings? What's going on with Boeing? Does anybody know something? Any, where's where's Jody Lang? Doesn't he work for them? Can he fill us in with something here? All right, Brian. Don't worry. I don't fly American too often. So I guess by default, I'm boycotting them for you, buddy. All right. We got lots of comments flying in, but I want to get to the people that make this show possible, right? Lupe Tortilla. That's TexMex.com. Check out a spicy pineapple margarita if you're in Houston, San Antonio, Austin, or the Dallas locations. And uh, follow their Facebook page, especially that original Lupe Tortilla Facebook page. That one's pretty cool and interesting. And um, 
Stan Holt was actually interviewed recently, and I shared the link to YouTube. He's pretty, I mean, he's obviously a smart guy, but he puts, uh, he, he presents some very valid points, we'll say. And uh, always nice to hear from him. And thank you, Lupe Tortilla, for sponsoring this show. We appreciate it. Draginsights.com. Thank you, Alicia Anderson. So if you want to check out your stats or your opponent's stats, draginsights.com, sign up. All you need is an email address. That's for free membership. And if you become a premium member to spy on your opponents and see all their stats, you are contingency eligible. You'll get two decals in the mail, and uh, you can be ready to rock. And so $79 a year for the premium membership uh, or free to check out your own stats. I mean, I would at least sign up for the free and check it out, right? Dragonsites.com. Don Kennedy Race Car Insurance. Insure your race cars. All the policies are written through Haggerty Insurance. 602-284-6240 if you want to reach out to Don Kennedy personally, which I highly recommend, or one Don Kennedy at gmail.com. He will be able to set you up, right? Don Kennedy can't afford not to uh, insure these race cars now, man. Lots of crazy things happening. Uh, questionable tracks sometimes. There's just, you got to do it. You got to do it, right? It doesn't cost that much money. Fuel Factor X, increase your fuel mileage, guys. In gas or diesel engines, in the in the RV, in the uh, generator, in your motorcycles, in your pickup trucks, what have you, in your regular daily drivers. The link is in the show notes there. Check it out. It, it's a special link. It's got my name embedded in it, so it should get you a discount. And it makes me look good toward the sponsor, if I want to be totally honest with you. So uh, Fuel Factor X, if you want to check them out and uh, and see what it's all about. I used it on my way down to gain. I use it in the RV. I just save it for my RV because that's the thing that gets the worst gas mileage for me. So uh, it helped me out. It picked me up about 1 to 1 1.5 miles per gallon on the way down to Gainesville and on the way back after, after I averaged everything out. So that is a 920-mile trip for me each way. So 1,840-mile trip. Uh, getting an extra 1.5 to the, to the gallon uh, helps me out, saves me some money. So Fuel Factor X, check that out if you want. Kenwood Welding and Metalizing. That's Tom Baker. Thanks, Tom, for everything you do for this show. Loyal supporter since since literally since day one. Um, uh, uh, what's I'm gonna <laughs> like forget what I'm saying here. Tom Baker, uh, Tim Stickles, and of course Don Kennedy. They're like my th and Drag Insights, my my OG original supporters. So I can't thank them enough. Tom Baker, I appreciate it, buddy. Uh, Ambi Amber Sand Soap is a new one that just joined this year. That's that Double O Green hand cleaner. And so uh, go to that website, ambiambersand.com. That's a contingency sponsor, guys. Buy the uh, kit, and you're going to need it. I mean, we all get dirty at the track or at home. It's it's hand soap for your house, too. So uh, can't afford not to. Pays for all divisionals and pays fast. So I got them stickers on my car the other day. I finally got all the decals on my car, by the way. I am a decal, like, fanatic. I, I've measured them all out. I, I kind of – because. I know people get the wrap and it, it makes things look nice and clean, but um, I measure all the decals out. I want exact spacing and I like to keep the decals like low. I like two rows of decals and then on the back, I'll go a little higher with them, but I just have the system that I use on, on all, all my cars. I just don't like decals like all over the place. I mean, it's just, uh, it, it's a car show, right? It's a car show. So I like my stuff to look nice and uh, nice and clean and presentable for the cameras, you know, all the cameras. They're always taking pictures of all of our cars. We got to look good. PontiacEngines.com. That's Bruce Fulper. We'll call him Mister Four Twenty Eight, right? Now he's got that Ford Nine Inch rear. Uh, his car is coming out soon. Can't wait to see it. Founder of that Four Twenty Eight combo and super stock. Can't wait to see out there, Bruce. CP Carrillo Pistons. Rick Pennington. R Pennington at CPCarrillo.com. Thank you for everything you do for me, CP, and for supporting this show and for what you've done for other racers too. I've heard some great stories about CP coming through in the clutch overnight and some pistons so uh, people could get to a race. What more could you ask for, right? Absolutely. All right, let's see who else is out there. We got Amcam12482 in SoCal. Oh, man, love Southern California. Waiting for the next race, Bowling Green. Don Kennedy loves that Bowling Green raceway. Pete Lanciers from Las Vegas. Pete had a tough one the other day. I was watching you on the TV, on the big screen, Pete. And... Uh, Unfortunate you didn't get that round win, but that's all right. I know you'll keep plugging away. First card down. We should have a competition. If we could get Pete Lanciers to come to Division One or Bob Bender to go out to Division Seven, I want to see who gets to the staging lanes first. It, I know, you know what? They'd probably just be paired up. They'd be the first two cars down. That's the way it would happen, right? 
Mark Sargenti, what's going on? Mark, he owns that beautiful silver Mustang behind my shoulder right there that I got to drive in Gainesville. Class winners. Um, so that was really cool. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for tuning in. Casey Miles is in the house. How you doing, buddy? Good evening. Good evening. 4.7. 4.7 out of 100. No. <laughs> yeah, 4.7 on the Richter scale. I don't know what a big one on the Richter scale is. I guess like an 8 or something like that. I don't remember. I learned the Richter scale when I was in elementary school, and I haven't used it since, actually. Uh, Tom Maioli. Tom Maioli probably uses the Richter scale out in California. What's going on, Tom? Thanks for tuning in. Jimmy Carter's in the house. What's up, Jimmy? How you doing, buddy? Thanks for tuning in. Walter Gamble, how are you? I'm doing all right. How are you? Brian, what's going on here? They opened my green bags, no TSA tags, and didn't reimburse me either. What? Is, oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Wow, American Airlines. Which airport was this? Let me know. I'm uh, I'm ready to boycott. Which one was it? Delta? I can't remember. The one that I used to fly down to Walt Walker's wedding. The one that made me miss the wedding. That 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 one. Um, Dave Cott, what's going on from Florida? He'll be on Delta on Saturday. All right, good luck to you. What's going on, Eddie? Hope to see you soon, buddy. Terry Nolan, what's going on, Terry? Love that Chevy too. Todd. Ro Man, I know you taught me how to say this name before. Rodenberg or Rodenberg? I forget. Frontier canceled my flight Sunday night in Phoenix at 11.45 p.m. Ended up sleeping on the floor. Oh, my God. They did that to me in Vegas. Spirit did it in Vegas. I can't remember which one. It was one of them crappy airlines. And they wanted me to, like, sit there till Tuesday. It was Sunday. Yeah, you're just going to wait till Tuesday when we get a flight for you. What? Are you crazy? John Winslow, what's up, man? Still waiting for Rocker Arms. Hope to be back on the track soon. Rocker, rocker, we know, John, we know. Uh, actually, I need some rocker arms, too. And uh, a lot of the stuff I use from Crower, they're not really making it anymore. Um, obviously, there's not a huge market for 289 um, racing parts. So it's been a little difficult right now. So I'm hoping to, uh, uh, you know, I'm glad I, st I, I stocked up on some, on some Crower uh, rods, the Sportsman rods, when they were making them for the 289. Uh, thank God, because they're out of the rod business now. So that's kind of uh, going to be interesting. I don't know what rods we'll be using in the future. Justin Graham, got to be up early to beat Lanciers to the lanes. Found that at Pomona. <laughs> yep. Uh, Bruce got some Harlan Sharps. Excellent. Harlan Sharps, good brand. I use them on my Stalker 5.0. Darian Houston, there he is. Now we can start. What's going on, Darian? Good to see you, buddy. Thanks for tuning in. All right, we got some birthdays in the house. Justin Jerome, well-known. Plymouth racer out there on the West Coast. His birthday was April 6th. These are, birthdays are from the Drag Insights homepage. If you're a Drag Insights member and you uh, put your birthday in, into your profile, I'll know when it's your birthday because it'll pop up on the master calendar. So if you want birthday shout outs and you want birthday posts on Facebook, put your birthday in there. Uh, happy birthday, Justin Jerome, April 6th. Mike Crutchfield and Rob Keister, right? Mike Crutchfield, Division II Super Stock Racer, Rob Keister. Uh, Division 1.90 racer and promoter extraordinaire. Both of their birthdays, uh, uh, October, April 7th. April 7th. Happy birthday. Two days ago. So that is Mike Crutchfield and Rob Keister. Happy birthday, guys. All right, we're going to switch it over to some unfortunately very, very sad news that uh, happened in Division 1 today. A, uh, a well-known super stock racer in Division 1. That's Dwayne Iskant. He's got a 1986 uh, Mustang. Uh, his son actually passed away, who was only 19 years old. And uh, I, I just can't imagine what 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 Dwayne is going through right now. His, his son, Mason, who was always at the track with him. I always saw Mason at the track. Um, it just, you know, the report I read today on the uh, GoFundMe said um, he passed away suddenly at 19 years of age. So if you guys are on Facebook... And I know a lot of you are right now. Uh, I believe uh, Mason just lost his grandfather uh, recently. Mason was a caretaker to his grandfather. I'm not sure if that was Dwayne's father or if it was Mason's uh, mother's father. But a grand the grandfather to Mason was uh, lost recently. And now Mason himself at the young, young age of 19. Oh, my God. I'm getting ooh, 19 years old. Terrible. But there's a GoFundMe page for uh, for the family there to help with the funeral. And um, 
I, I posted the link today. Uh, Dwayne Hoven sent me the link. I posted it on my Facebook, on the driver interviews, Facebook page. If anybody, uh, wants to donate, um, they, the, the family greatly appreciate that. And I saw a lot of donations actually coming in today. So I'm sure that the family thanks you very much. And, uh, Man, what a tough time. Let's keep the uh, ice skin, Dwayne ice skin and the family in, in, in your prayers, everybody. So that's a tough one. It's, um, I don't know what to say. <coughs> oh man, 19 years old. Can't believe this. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's move out of this news. Cause I got to keep my composure right now. Um, uh, y'all, y'all already know that um, I met with uh, NHRA about the records. Everybody's donated. We have enough money for the crowdfunded uh, two issues that'll be in the National Dragster in July and December of 2024. If you set a record, you're going to be in there. If you've set a record in the last two years, you will be in there as well. So, uh, guys, get out there and set records. This is this is our um, this is our baby step. I'll say to making records important again. Um, I would like to see more people setting them. I don't like going in the, in the dragster or online right now and seeing so many minimums. That's not the spirit of stock and super stock. This is a performance based uh, category categories. And uh, we want to keep it that way. So get your name in the dragster, get in there and um, set a record. All right, guys. All right. Let's see here. For anybody that doesn't know, the Winter Nationals, which was the second national event of the season, was postponed. Sportsmen did not finish. They will be finishing the Friday of the uh, Las Vegas. Um, let's see. No, I'm sorry. The, here's the following classes. They'll be finishing Thursday of the uh, Las Vegas Divisional. Okay, Top Dragster, Super Comp, uh, Super Gas, Top Sportsman, Stock, and Super Stock will all be finishing. There are seven-plus cars left in each category. Uh, that is Thursday of the Las Vegas Divisional. The Las Vegas Divisional is April 18th and 19th. And then there's another one, the 20th and the 21st. So that, I believe, would be on the 18th, April 18th. They'll be finishing the Winter Nationals, those categories. Competition Eliminator and Factory Stock Showdown will be finishing this Friday at the Four Wide Nationals. All right? So for anybody that wasn't aware. Um the Virginia Nationals, we talked about this last week. They're going to get three pro sessions on that Saturday. That's a, been a topic uh, for discussion as of late. Um, I don't know if that's a great thing for the sportsman racers. I know we're not the main attraction there. We're more like the halftime show, and I can appreciate that. I like being the, the, the prelude um, to the main event. What I really, really don't like is racing after after the pros are done for the day. I know that just happened in Phoenix this weekend. I really don't like that because everybody leaves. I mean, you you come to watch the Philadelphia Eagles. You you might notice, you know, the cheerleaders when they're out there doing the halftime show, and you might like watch them. But nobody comes to the game to watch that. Like nobody goes to the Phillies game to watch the fanatic do his dances, even though they're hilarious and I love him and I video him when he's out there. But once the game's over, I leave. I don't stick around to see if the fanatic's going to do any more tricks, right? So that's to me, that to me is what stock and super stock, you know, and the sportsman categories are all about. But uh, I mean, if I had to choose racing at 8, 8 a.m. or 8 p.m., I think I'll take the 8 a.m., even though I don't like racing that early. But the crowd's at least filtering in, they're incoming as opposed to outgoing, right? Or, or already gone. So uh, I just, you know, you saw what happened in Phoenix this past weekend. I mean, they were they were cut short of time. They had to squeeze a lot in on Saturday, which meant sportsmen. You know, they did get. I think they got like a round or two in in front of the the crowd, at least one round in front of the crowd on Sunday. But I know they finished Sunday night with nobody in the stands, and that's just not going to do a whole lot for us um, as far as getting us promoted, getting us in front of you know eyes, getting contingency sponsors to want to kick in more money, getting, you know, us to go out and find potential sponsors. You know, it's just, it's hard. It's easier to go out and find a sponsor. If you can show them a picture of your car doing a wheelie from the starting line with a packed house in the background, I think sponsors would like to see something like that. All right. In addition to the fact that you should have social media, if you're trying to pick up sponsors, just a little tip. 
All right, so we can debate that Virginia Nationals thing all we want. The Virginia Nationals are uh, June 21st to the 23rd. I do plan on running that event. I just um, I hope it all. I hope we get the you know what 10 pounds of stuff in the five pound bag, and I hope it all works out. To be honest with you. <sighs> all right, we'll keep it moving. Terrible life, so short and unpredictable. You know, prayers to that family. Absolutely, I know. You're not up at 8 a.m. Oh, I am. I just don't want to race at 8 a.m. I'm up. I'm up drinking my coffee by by seven. But it's just you know I'm not ready to race yet. I got stuff to do. I got I got I got coffee to drink and strategizing to do. Uh, did you see Jeff Sarah make a pass and collect 50k from? Yeah, I did, man. He's he's been tearing it up. And Luke Bogacki won like another what three hundred fifty thousand dollars or something. Jeff Sarah is. He's a Maple Grove boy. I mean, when I started bracket racing, he was just fresh out of junior dragsters, and he was racing uh, Super Pro. And he was making a name for himself back then when he was like 17, 18 years old. So he's always been good. But, uh, yep, he's a Maple Grove through and through. That's where he started. And look at him. He's like, he's world famous at this point. Uh, good evening, Paul. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Pete Ducko, how are you, buddy? Down in Florida. Uh, Camry's crash. That was, oof. That was kind of that was kind of weird. I finally watched the video of that today. Uh, yep, I am a morning dude. Thank you. <laughs> My wife knows. <laughs> uh, as far as Camry Caruso's crash, it was a it was a. I mean, was the sound just off? I watched it on Facebook or Instagram. I can't remember, but it looked like she launched pretty hard. But then she kind of just got out of it and was not going so fast. Like it was going like 150. Now pro stockers go way faster than that. Um, it was just toward the end or right after the finish line. I don't know if she got on the brake or if she let the clutch out. It just looked like them back tires locked up, something locked up back there. And that thing took a hard left turn right into the wall. And then it took a hard right turn into the other wall. So, uh, she's kind of bruised up. She's, it's going to be a couple months, which is very sad. I know. I mean, that girl is enthusiastic about racing. That's for sure. I've met her a couple times, uh, saw her at PRI. And she's got a nice little team around her. And for her to have to be out of the car for a little while, thats I'm sure that's not anything that team wanted to see happen. So I hope she uh, heals up faster than expected. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Ray Klotz, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for tuning in. I'm up at 05 Dirty Pete. Just missed the call. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Broken leg. Oh, she does have a broken leg. All right. Wow. That's sad. Oh, man. But it could have been worse. It always could be worse, right? I'm glad she's okay. All right. Let's get into, let's see, the results from this weekend, the Arizona Nationals, obviously. So we'll start with Stock Eliminator. And this is, it was great to have this race back, right? This race we thought was gone forever, and now it's back indefinitely. Hallelujah, right? Race started out kind of crazy. Uh, qualifying on Friday, very, very windy. I think it was saw some cars getting loose down near the finish line. A super, a couple super gas cars, I think got a little, uh, loose hit the wall. So it was, it didn't start out all sunshine and rainbows. That's for sure on Friday, but it, we got the race finished on Sunday and that, that was a great thing. Number one qualifier in stock eliminator. They were supposed to get three qualifying sessions. They only got two. Uh, number one qualifier was Leo Glassbrenner, Factory Stock C. That's a 2014 Camaro, standout racer from Division 7. He's out in California, and uh, he's the transmission builder, Remac Transmissions. Congratulations on your number one qualifying position. There were only 43 cars in stock eliminator this past uh, weekend in Arizona. Uh, the actual eliminator went to Tony Marconi. Love that name, by the way. Tony Marconi, and he squared off against our good friend and show supporter, Mike Cotton, right, to uh, Plymouth. I'm going to go ahead and say there were both 340. Uh, one's a Demon, one's a Duster. Tony Marconi is a 72 Dodge Demon. Mike Cotton's a 73 Plymouth Duster. Tony's an E-Stock Automatic. Cotton's an F-Stock Automatic. All right, so Tony dials 1089, cuts an 030 light, runs a 1092.7. He's safe by 37 thousandths uh, on his dial and gets the win. Mike Cotton who was driving lights out. I mean, 008 light second round, 005 light third round, uh, 025 fourth round, 023 in the fifth round. He was he was killing it. Well, in the uh, the final round, he was a little late on the tree, 091 on the tree, dialed an 1105, 
and broke out with an 11 2 giving the win to Tony Marconi. So congratulations, Tony. I believe that is his first win. I think that is a Brad Van Lant-powered 72 Dodge Demon. So he's got a cool name. He gets his first win. Enjoy that, Wally, from Phoenix. Craig Gaultier is in the house. Heading to Vegas. Hope to make your Tuesday results. I think you will, Craig. I know something big is about to happen for you because you've been driving well. Your lights are very good for the most part. You just need I think you just need a little bit of luck to uh to to lean your way. And uh you got a hell of a car too. We all know that. Uh moving into super stock now. Super stock. Talk about a battle of the heavyweights. Well, first number one qualifier, Brad Burton. He loves qualifying number one. Usually when there's an odd number of cars, he does it. He did it with an even number of cars this time. There was 46 cars in super stock, but I think 45 cars showed up for Q1. And giving him the false impression that they were an odd number of cars, he went for that number one spot, hoping to get a first round buy. He didn't get it because an even number of cars ended up qualifying. So all he had to do was get past that first round, and then he would get a second round buy. Well, who did he get in the first round? None other than Justin Lamb. So we had a battle of the heavyweights first round, and Brad Burton was fortunate enough to get that win, getting that second round by, and then cruising 011 light third round, 017 light fourth round, 004 light fifth round, before running into Ryan McClanahan in the final. Heavyweights, heavyweights, heavyweights. Brad Burton versus Ryan McClanahan in a final round at Phoenix. That's worth the price of admission right there. Uh, McClanahan's got a 2008 Cobalt Super Stock B modified. This is a killer car, and he's an absolute killer driver. In, uh, in everything that he drives. Uh, but this car especially goes 840s, man. So final round, Ryan McClanahan versus Brad Burton. You know you know they're both stepping it up here. Uh, McClanahan's double 004 on the tree and runs dead on the 847, dead on with a one. He throws up a 5,000s package in the final round. He ain't shy, right, against Brad Burton. Brad Burton's 021 in the final round. I mean, 021, <laughs> very respectable light, right? Dallas 933, runs a 934 with a zero, so he's got a 31,000s package. That'll win you a, a lot of races. Uh, just can't win you this final round against Ryan McClanahan. Ryan McClanahan picks up his 12th national event win. I don't know how many that was at Phoenix for him, but uh, Burton does very well at Phoenix. He won there last year. He's in the final round again this year. Killer driver out on the West Coast with that Firebird, and Ryan McClanahan, killer driver. Both former world champions, by the way. Uh, going at it in the final round. How about that? All right. Justin Graham. Congratulations to Tony Marconi. Great winning the Demon in honor of Uncle Rick Colber. All right. So a win in honor of his uncle. I like it. I like it. Uh, unfortunately, NHRA doesn't care, never has cared about sportsman categories. They they do. I mean, that's a, that's, that's a false statement. We can't go with that, MJ. Um they do their they do their best, and I think they're they're doing as much as they can at this point. But this past weekend, you know, it was it was hard for them to get that race in. Um, I do. I mean, I, I see what you're I see where you're coming from there. If you're referring to the Virginia National event, uh, I you know I think we talked about this last week, and even Walt Walt proposed that Walt Walker proposed like a decent schedule where we could get you know we'd run in the morning, maybe we could mix us in a round or two in between the pros and then maybe run us one more after the pros are done. That would be Saturday. And then let us just be part of the main show on Sunday. I mean, I got to think if, if there are three rounds or less left on Sunday in sportsman, I don't understand how you cannot get that in, in with the show. So, I mean, three rounds you're talking, what, what is that? Eight cars at the most in each category. Like, I don't know. Um, what do people think if they don't give incrementals, just finish line time and mile per hour, no more 60 eighth mile thousand foot during eliminations back to baseline racing. I don't know. I've never done that before. I know that's what it was like back in the day, right? When everybody else started and they didn't know what the reaction times were and 60 foot times and all that. Uh, but sounds interesting. I've been involved for over 59 years. It changed too much for racers, who, uh, for many racers who have walked away 50 years, 50 years. All right. I hear you. You're speaking from experience. I get it. I get it. Um, it was a very, very eventful uh, race, though, in Phoenix. Did anybody see that round? I mean, it was the most. You think you got to watch the pros to, to to see eventful, you know, 
rounds of competition. No, you need to watch uh, first round. I think it was first round. Was it first round? No, I'm forgetting. Of uh, Stock Eliminator. The round between Ryan McClanahan and uh, Randy Manns. Okay, so it was quite an eventful race, to say the least. Um, Randy Manns has an A-stick Firebird, man. Like a 1999 Firebird, 2000 Firebird. I don't know. Cool car. And that thing leaves nice. Now, Randy Manns is the is the owner of Fast Shocks. So they're, his, the shocks that he builds are, you know, pristine. That thing was up in the air. So he gets a head start against Ryan McClanahan. Up in the air, lands beautifully. He's shifting gears. And what a, I mean, he's got, he's on a great run. He's like 021 on the tree, dials a 10 flat. McClanahan's in the, in the left lane. This is a, a factory stock Copo. He leaves the starting line. He red lights. He's up in the air, up in the air, up in the air, way high. He's got to get out of it. Smacks down and almost crosses the center line. Kind of, I don't know if he touches it or not. It was hard to see with the camera angle, but it was like, wow, that's crazy. All right. He red lit. Uh, he's out. McClanahan's out. Randy Mann's is the winner. Well, Randy Mann gets to about the thousand foot marker, and all of a sudden his roof blows off the car. I never, I, I saw it live. I just was watching it, and I saw that happen. I was like, whoa! So I rewound it and watched it again, and I was like, whoa, this is crazy. So I didn't think anything of it. He still ran dead on his dial, <laughs> like so. That was it was amazing. Even with the roof off, even probably catching all that wind and uh, and changing, I guess, the weight of the car a little bit. Runs dead on dead on the dial, gets the win, and McClanahan just limps it down the track. Well, it comes out after that. That uh, <laughs> here's Pete Lance. Here's he rolled up next to me at fuel check. I looked over and did a double take when he got out. I said, "I bet, I bet that got your attention." Yeah. Oh, I bet it did. Um, but in the end, NHRA uh, didn't like something about the roof of his car, and they disqualified him. Okay, so. Ryan McClanahan was then reinstated. And um, for anybody, I know there was a lot of posts about it on uh, social media and whatnot, but the official explanation, and this is coming from Mike Manns. This is Randy Mann's son. And I want to get this out there for uh, for anybody so that there's not like speculation um, about this. Um, I want everybody to know like what, what the, what the real story is coming from right from the man's family. So tech inspectors saw what they felt was unacceptable modifications to the steel roof structure underneath the roof panel. The unfortunate reality is that the tech team does not have any schematics or diagrams to see what this car has for a roof structure from the factory, or they would have seen that there was very little material removed or trimmed away in this area. The material of the roof itself was not a concern or issue. It was the perception that the roof structure had been heavily modified, which it had not. Now, these cars came with like plastic or fiberglass uh, roofs that are glued down. Uh, they don't come with steel roofs, these cars. GM doesn't, I, they discontinued this. They don't use this anymore. Uh, so the man's family provided schematics to NHRA uh, to show what the factor roof structure looks like and that the car is already undergoing. Or then they said the car is already undergoing the modifications to meet NHRA's satisfaction. So, and then Mike goes on to say, we'll take the two pound weight addition and move on with it. We'll be ready for next weekend's event in Las Vegas. So, I mean, this is not a five minute drive for them. They come from division five. This was a hike to come down here and have this unfortunate incident happen. And, um, and we don't, you know, Nobody thinks this happened, you know, on purpose. We don't think they were doing anything um, illegal for this to happen. Uh, but they do appreciate Lonnie Grimm's patience and candid conversation while they work to uh, better understand the rationale for for the disqualification, uh, for the decision of Lonnie to disqualify them. So the man's family showing class right there. Um, I know that's got to be a tough pill to swallow. I mean, when you drive all that way and run a hell of a race against Ryan McClanahan, and you, you you won the race. You won. You were 020 on the tree and dead on with a five, and Ryan red lit anyway. He's tough to beat. And you get through a round win right there, and then for that to happen is unfortunate. But um, it was, if you haven't seen it, it, Walt Walker shared it on his stock super stock page, and then I shared Walt's post onto my uh, driver interviews page. So you can't miss it. it. I encourage everybody to watch it. I mean, it's just, 
at, at the expense, I should say, of the man's family. It's entertaining for anybody who's never seen stock and super stock. It got a lot of eyeballs on stock. Uh, silver linings there for for the man's family. I know they probably don't want to hear that, but um, I mean, any eyes we can get on stock, it got people to watch it for the first time. So uh, maybe ho hopefully they'll be watching lots more of it now. All right, we also had a race in uh, uh, the the Carolina. What is it? The Coastal what, Carolina? No, Carolina Class Racers Association. I was about to say Coastal Carolina University. <laughs> Uh, there was a race down there in that association that's um, Robbie Drawn, Tabitha Drawn does a lot for that. Dave uh, Lay and his wife uh, work in that association. And I just scrounged up some quick results here. I know uh, it was a two-race uh, weekend right there, and Linwood Daltrey got the win on Saturday, and Mike Mahler got the win on Sunday. And that's really all I uh, kind of got my hands on right there. So congratulations, Linwood Daltrey. And uh, Mike Mahler on your wins down there in uh, uh, in the CCRA, the Carolina Class Racers Association. I don't know which track they were at this weekend, but maybe somebody else can uh, let me know. Warren Monteith, what's going on, buddy? I know I'm late for the party, but I have a question. This has probably been covered, but how do you red light in eliminations and get reinstated back into eliminations? Just wondering. Well, that's how you do it. Now, had Ryan McClanahan crossed the center line there, would he have been re reinstated? That's a question I would like answered because I don't understand all the rules on that, on, on like, you know, first or worst. Like if both drivers cross the center line, do they both get disqualified and neither one of them makes it to the next round? I really need to read like a rule book on that kind of stuff, on race procedures very, very carefully because one time uh, I was getting the head start and the car – cross the center line and was coming up behind me. So I was scared that he was going to hit me. So I wanted to cross into the other lane, but I also wanted to win the race. And I was afraid that if I crossed into the other lane to get out of his way, that I was going to get disqualified also. So I just don't know how that plays out. If anybody does know the rule book better than me, um, which I'm sure everybody does <laughs> let me know. All right. Um, it wasn't a T-top car. No, I, I, that was something that we needed to clarify because I thought it was T-tops also because when I first watched it, I saw a th like a thin piece of what to me looked like a T-top fly over the right side of the wall. And that's when Alan Reinhardt said, did they just throw the hood scoop over the wall? And I thought it was a T-top. And then I saw other people saying T-tops. And of course, I just thought they all knew what they were talking about. So I, I thought it was T-tops at first, but it wasn't T-tops. Mike Mance clarified that. All right. Uh, uh, CCRA was in Roxborough, North Carolina this past weekend. All right, Roxborough. I saw Russ Tom Gent. I saw Russ got an award there for best uh, reaction time in the second round. Tim Barrett was even there this weekend. He got uh, what best losing package uh, award in the second round. It sounds like they were giving out awards, like lots of them. So I like that about the association races. That's really cool. Um, all right. What else? What else? We got a lot going on um, over the next month. I mean, this weekend we have the Vegas Four Wide Nationals. So, Four Wide, anybody that likes that. The sportsman categories don't do it. We don't run Four Wide in stock and super stock for anybody that's curious. But the pros in the nitro cars and pro stock, um, and I guess pro stock motorcycles, they do. Forecast looks pretty good 83 on Friday, 75 on Saturday, 65 on Sunday. But it's Vegas. And it's calling for a lot of wind on Friday. And or, I'm sorry, a lot of wind on, well, decent wind on Friday. Lots of wind on Saturday for eliminations. And kind of a lot of wind on Sunday. So bring your modified, bring your eight and nine second cars is all I would advise you to do. Um, but no rain in the forecast, so that's good. Uh, the NMRA NMCA All-Star Nationals are this weekend in Rockingham. Uh, they have a great weather forecast Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Rockingham. 70s and 80s and dry. Thursday looks bad and a lot of rain. But if that's gone, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday should be a good a good race. So have fun, NMRA, NMCA. I haven't hit too many of those in recent years. I used to race those when they were at Maple Grove back in the day, like bracket two, bracket three. I enjoyed them. Um, good luck, anybody heading to Vegas, though, for the four wide. Good luck, anybody finishing the uh, Winter Nationals over the next two weeks in Vegas. Uh, over the next month, though, we got a lot of action. We got Division Two 
Uh, Division two is going to be in Silver Dollar Motorsports Park. That's in Georgia. Division four is going to be at Thunder Valley Raceway Park. And Division seven is going to be at Vegas for the next two weeks. Also, uh, Division four, I guess you could call it the Cajun Sports Nationals. That's May 2nd to the 5th. That's Bell Rose, uh, Louisiana. No problem, Raceway Park, which I am trying to get to, by the way. I need to get down and cover a race and not race in it. I just need to cover one. And then uh, for us, Division One, we're going to open the season May 10th through the 12th at Cecil County Dragway. Good news, Brian Loans is going to be announcing our race that weekend. And uh, there's also a Pro Mod Invitational, 50000 to win that weekend. So I think Fletcher Cox, the Eagles player, longtime Eagles player who just retired uh, about a month or two ago, is going to be racing uh, Pro Mod there that weekend. So I highly advise you come out, watch hashtag the car show, and you can watch Pro Mod and Brian Loans will be announcing. So it's going to be a great time at Cecil County, May 10th to the 12th. And then in addition, if you want to race stock or super stock, the following week later, you can leave all your stuff at Cecil County that week and uh, race stock and super stock with us on May uh, 18th and 19th. So I highly advise that. We also, by the way, our Memorial Day weekend race in Division One at Maple Grove, Alan Reinhardt's going to announce that. So we got some big time announcers coming in. Division one, we're pretty lucky. I like it. Um, so hope to see everybody. I'm trying, I'm working. I hit Maple Grove up and said, Are you guys doing a carload deal Memorial Day weekend or what? So they said, Yeah, we think we're doing it on Saturday, kind of like they did last year. You know me, I'm always trying to, you know, beg and plead them to start that carload deal earlier in the day and maybe for multiple days, you know? So. Get on them about it. Send them some messages. All right. We can, uh, you know, maybe we can get them to let people in earlier so they can watch stock and super stock. Right. I mean, why not? Uh, but anyways, lots going on over the next uh, month, month and a half, two months. Cecil County, like I said, here's the flyer for our stock super stock events. Hundred dollar entry, twenty five hundred to win, four races, and a nice sizable points and a uh, bonus fund. Right. Uh, 2000 if you finish in first place, uh, 1000 for finishing in second place, and 500 for finishing in third place. That's the that's the year-end points bonus fund. It's only four races, so all you got to do is show up for four races, uh, two weekends. $100 entry each race. Can't beat that with a stick, right? Absolutely not. Uh, hope to see you guys all there. I can't wait. Um, and then for anybody that was unaware, the Cajun Sports Nationals is going to run class eliminations on Saturday. So it's Friday qualifying, Saturday class eliminations, Sunday eliminator. All right. So that's May 3rd to the 5th. May 2nd actually has a, uh, like a big money shootout. Uh, so you might not want to miss that one. And I think there's a racer barbecue. So that's Bell Rose, no problem. Raceway park. Check that one out. Look it up, get yourself some tickets. Hope to see you there. Hopefully I can go. All right, let's go over the uh, points. We haven't done that yet this year, so here we go. National points leaders in stock eliminator. Troy Huntsbury, Division One. Wow, representing. He's got 246 points. Um, top five. Jared Jordan's in second. Parker Theobald's in third. Jody Lang's in fourth. C.W. Hofer is in fifth. Super stock. Monty Bogan Jr., he came out firing this year, 269 points. Don Shuford is in second. Evan Kowalski's in third. Jim Harrison, the Snoopy car, he's in fourth. And Don Barber's in fifth. Uh, Mark Powick is in first in Factory Stock Showdown. And we're going to rattle off the first place racer in each division in Stock and Super Stock. So Division One, first place, Tim Barrett, Stock Eliminator. Uh, John Sierra in Super Stock. Division Two, Trey Payne, the third in Stock. Don Shuford in Super Stock. Division Three, Doug Duell in stock. Kenny Schindler in super stock. Love that Corvette. Division four, Michael Bullris in stock. And Hunter Pierdola in super stock. Division five, Daryl Goheen in stock. Doug Engels in super stock. Talk about beautiful Corvettes. Uh, division six, Jody Lang in stock. And Jeff Devey in super stock. And division seven, Jared Jordan in stock. And Craig Maddox in super stock. Those are your points leaders throughout the country. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's all we got for the night, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. I want to give Ford a little shout-out. Finally got a contingency check from the uh, Gainesville Baby Gators class win. So 
We got one from Ford. We're still waiting on one from Moser and Sunoco. I heard a motorhome had the same problem. <laughs> ah, Mark. Yep, my motorhome had a similar issue <laughs> that, that Randy Mans' car had on the way down to Gainesville. But it's fixed now. It's fixed. We got it back together. Funny, funny, Mark. Vic Gilmino has been racing for 64 years. My goodness. Uh, Amy Butler says, CCRA is having a special race against NMCA racers at Rockingham. Pretty excited to see how that goes. All right, is that that's this weekend. Beautiful. All right, CCRA versus NMCA also at Rockingham. All right, that's this weekend, I'm assuming, right? Looking forward to the divisional at Cecil County. I am too. It's the fastest track in the country. Good job. Love you from Dino Mares. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I wish I could hit the Cajun Nationals just because of the venue. That will be a good time for sure. That track's going to be fast in May, and uh, I love it. The crowd comes out to uh, No Problem Raceway, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Good info. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, MJ. I appreciate it. Scott Cott, thanks for tuning in. As always, Irene, get the pizza out of the oven. <laughs> All right. Mark Sargent, yes, I know. It was funny. Funny, funny. <laughs> ah, that Mark, he is funny. What will we do without him? All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Everybody have a good weekend. Good luck racing. Be safe getting to the races, and may you have many win lights. All right, look forward to uh, – I'm going to put out some posts this week. I'm going to look up some Drag Insight stats and maybe put out a couple uh, couple interesting stats, maybe uh, Thursday or Friday morning before you all start racing. All right, guys, have a good night. Take care. See you. Maybe it didn't work. Maybe I'm still live. All right. Well, if I am still live, Rodney Cakel's in, and he's been fighting his stalker all the way. Rodney, I know the feeling. I hate that feeling, right? Some of these cars just want to take you to the bitter end sometimes. They just make you just want to stop racing. All right, I got to get out of here. It's past my bedtime. See you guys.